everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're on episode 13 of Berserk, and uh, the last two episodes have been really, really good. Um, finally getting some character development with Casca and Guts, getting them to come to terms, and at least getting Guts to understand why Casca has been the way that she's been around him, and there's a pretty layered reason why she's been the reason, the way that she has been. I mean, now all we need is for Guts to open up and let Casca know how he feels, but I don't even think Guts knows how he feels. So <laughs> that may be hard to do. That may be hard for Guts to do since he doesn't seem to even know how he himself feels about things. But it's been a very awesome series. I have loved everything that has been given to us. It's been so nice. And yeah, I have a couple comments I want to talk about, and then we're going to dive into episode 13. When we left off, Guts and Casca, it seems that Griffith is leading the charge to take over the enemy, which is what, you know, would, would line up with his character and his ambitions. But that means that Casca and Guts have to fight their way back to the Band of the Hawk. And if they're in enemy territory and they're surrounded by Adon's men, that might not be easy. And what do we do with that? So... How is that going to go, right? And Casca's dealing with her fever. She's on her period. Things aren't looking great there. Guts is like, what do I do? So he somehow has magical, like, like fever. He has, like, a fever reducer. He has ibuprofen on stat, which is great. Glad he's prepared. <laughs> but I do have some comments I want to talk about before we uh, get into this. These are from, from episodes a while back, so humor me. But I have recorded uh, pretty far ahead at this point. Um, basically, uh, Moon talked about in the Discord that in episode one, way back in episode one, that the forging of the sword is a reference to Conan the Barbarian. I did not know that, the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. I know of Conan the Barbarian, I know the reference, but I don't know, I've not watched that movie all the way through, and the parts I've seen of it were from a very long time ago. So, I could see Guts' body type being based on Arnold Schwarzenegger from the 80s, I could see that. That would check out, so that was pretty cool. Um, K.A. noted that Adon's voice actor, oh my god, Kadon's voice, Adon's voice actor has been in so many things, and the notable things, I was like, wait, what? Adon, War Turtle, the dorky villain that we've had so far, his voice actor has played Younger Taguro from Yu Yu Hakusho, has played Oculus from Death Parade, has played Kaido from One Piece. I was like, wait! Kaido, Yungo Taguro, Oculus, all of their voice actors are the same person, and it's Adon? <laughs> I would expect maybe like Zod, but no, Adon? I was really surprised. I was like, huh. Although, you know, you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> and Kaido didn't come in for, for One Piece for a, a, wee, a wee bit after this was coming out, so yeah. I could totally get that, but Younger Taguro surprises me, because Younger Taguro has a very distinct voice, and it doesn't sound like Adon, so I'm like, wow, that's amazing to me. Hmm. I was very impressed by that, so thank you, K.A., for pointing that out. And then Amir Almond. Amir Almond has, for the last several weeks, been giving, um, telling me what the previews were uh, for each of the episodes. I don't, I don't watch the previews, but they've told me what the text has been for the previews going in. I think Trigun does something similar. Um, and I really appreciated it because it's, it's funny to see how it lines up with the contents of the episode, the previews. I was like, ah, interesting. Thematically, they all kind of line up. But then they talked about the, uh, talked about the song, the OP at this point. And I felt like their analysis was very appropriate for where I'm at in the series. And I was like, oh, wow, this timed out really perfectly. Because I saw it with episode six where, in, right, as I'm recording this, Patreon is getting to Zod, which is great. Um, and talked about the put your glasses on. People were commenting that. I was like, what does that mean? But they said put your grasses on. And it was a a reference to the Japanese singer singing in English. Because oftentimes the L's and R's are mixed up um, when people when Japanese people try to like say things in English. And they're like, put your grasses on is like, it's a little bit stereotypical. I was like, I, we'll just say put your glasses on. We'll just do that. That sounds more appropriate. But it's making a meme. And it's referring to the idea, the line, put your glasses on, is referring to you need to change your perspective or you're not seeing this clearly. Which is 
got this season in a nutshell where people need to change their perspectives or they're not seeing things clearly like they should be. And I thought that was a really, really good reference to these last two episodes where Guts has kind of had to change his perspective to understand where Casca is coming from, which is really interesting. But also, um, now this is just Amir Almond's interpretation. It's not exactly canon, mangaka approved. But they were talking about how for them, the song, first of all, the song, they were like, oh, it sounds really upbeat, but it's very melancholy. And I'm like, well, that's a lot of 90s alt rock right there. A lot of songs from the 90s and early 2000s that are alternative rock, they sound really upbeat and peppy. And then you listen to the lyrics and you're like, wow, this is a really sad song. <laughs> but they were talking about how the song seems to be from a naive, per a naive person's point of view, telling them to be positive. And talks about how, which makes sense because in my mind, Guts is a very naive person. He's, he's not dumb. He's a himbo, but he's not dumb. But he's very naive and kind of gullible and doesn't quite, he kind of doesn't, he feeds into things rather easily. And it makes sense that it's, you know, a naive person's point of view. And we see Guts is like senior portraits in every other still frame, right, in the OP. But the naive person is asking for the person in the song to tell them why they're afraid but it's too late for that conversation to happen. And the connection is either lost or missed, which kind of makes sense with our three characters. They're constantly wondering why each other are thinking the things that they're doing, but they're seemingly missing the connections that they could be making. And although in this last episode or two, we've seen Guts and Casca make a connection, but it's more Guts making the connection with Casca than Casca making it with Guts because she still doesn't understand why he is the way that he is, which kind of ties to the song. And the idea, the moral is, you don't know what others are going through, which definitely ties to the last episode with Griffith, with Casca. You don't know what others are going through, and there are things that can hold you back from revealing how you feel about taking action and about missed truths. And oftentimes, because of this hesitation, you miss out on positive opportunities. I'm like, the last three episodes have been just like basically emphasizing the whole theme of the OP, if that's the case. And I'm like, yes, please. That's exactly it. These characters have gone through a lot, but they're so afraid to communicate about it or ask others what they've gone through that you miss those chances to connect with people and forge a better relationship. And I'm like, I, if that's not the last three episodes, I don't know what is. So, so thank you, Amir Almond, for timing that comment out perfectly. I thought that fit this episode to a T. I was like, yep, that makes all the sense. But yeah, so I, I'm very curious to see where we're going to from here. We, we're past the halfway point of the series. Um, we're still in battle. Guts and Casca have to make it back to Griffith somehow. Is Griffith, is it going to turn out that Griffith sent a search party to them? Or are they going to fight their way back to Griffith and be like, we're here? Or we know Guts isn't going to die because he's in episode one, which is in the future. Casca though? I'm assuming she won't because we just spent all this time, but you know, sudden backstory. <laughs> I feel like in the nineties, a sudden backstory wasn't quite as much of a thing as it is in modern shonen and modern anime, but it's still a thing. So, you know, I've got to be careful, right? But we'll just have to wait and see, right? So we're going to start episode 13 of Berserk and see what happens. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. And let's turn the sound up and let's go. That was the shortest episode ever. <laughs> that was the shortest episode ever. And I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice as I, as I do this. Um, but yeah, what? <laughs> Just lose my voice. But what the heck, man? I am kind of floored. Um, I don't know what to say. I wish there was more. <laughs> I don't know how long this discussion will be for this episode because this episode was just mostly action throughout the entire thing. But I do think that there is stuff with Griffith or with Griffith, with Guts and Casca that we can talk about and leading into what will happen. My hope is that my hope is that Casca's in a predicament where she doesn't think she can move. She doesn't feel like she can get away. I'm like, girl, just kick him in the balls. <laughs> I hope she does that. I hope she kicks him in the balls and then like knocks him over and grabs her sword and slays him. That would be great. Um, 
I would like that. And I would like that for her character, too, because as much as I was like, okay, well, maybe Griffith and Judo and Pippin and then will show up to save her, I would like Casca to be able to save herself. I would like it to be that Casca can get herself out of the situation and she can find a way. Although it's three guys versus one, which three versus one in any scenario, unless you are guts, is like a pretty hard deal for anybody. I don't think Corcus, Corcus versus three people, Judo versus three people, I think anybody else, regardless of gender, would be in a tough position with multiple opponents. Again, unless you're guts. <laughs> and then you just, just slaughter everybody, right? But I really hope that Casca is able to get herself out of the situation because I feel like a big part of this episode... What's interesting is that I think if you looked at this episode at a surface value, it would be very easy to say that Guts is being sexist and that Guts doesn't care about women. <laughs> women are stupid and I don't respect them. Like that old song from the early 2000s. Um, but I don't think... I think if you look at it from... A position any more than surface level it becomes clear that that's not what Guts really thinks. First of all Guts is a cindere. He is a cindere. Guts is not good at expressing himself emotionally. Guts be emotionally vulnerable since when? You know like Guts is just not good at vulnerability and he's not good at expressing himself socially, emotionally. He's just very repressed as far as that goes and it comes from how he's been brought up all of these years. So it's understandable. But Guts also is kind of a cindere. He doesn't like giving away what he thinks. But then his actions sometimes speak louder than his words, right? And some of the nonverbals that he does in this episode, I'm like, okay, that's what you really mean. Okay. So I want to go back through and talk about this episode and just kind of where we're at past the OP. Prepared for death does not give you good vibes. Prepared for death is like, well, we're probably going to die. That's awesome. I do want to make note that the moon looks like the behelot looks like a little egg the way that the moon is shaped uh, could that be by design is this fate whatever and so we see the two walking up which granted first of all regardless of lady business and all of that deal walking in armor if you have a fever is just like all that extra weight tacked on if you've ever had a fever and you try to do anything remotely manual labor it sucks like you it feels like you're complete it feels like your body is already heavy like it hurts to move like it's just you just want to sit there lie down and be like I don't want to think about anything so the fact that they're like having to walk around in armor and she feels bad on top of possibly like having cramps and possibly like her body feeling fatigued like that all combined together would make you absolutely miserable and so Guts, you know, obviously has no clue how a woman feels. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what she's going through. He just looks back and sees that she's struggling. And he's just kind of like, and you know that the thing about Guts that I do appreciate is he doesn't want to treat her like a damsel in distress because he knows that she doesn't want that. He doesn't want to treat her like, oh, well, just let me carry you and let me do things for you because he knows she doesn't want that. As she just went on last episode talking about how the best thing Griffith did for her was give her a weapon and a means to fight. It was kind of like the the proverb of you teach it, you give a man a fish and you know he'll live for a day. You teach a man to fish and he'll live for life. You know that's kind of the same kind of thing that Griffith did for her. And so Guts kind of seems like he's wanting to follow suit. He doesn't want to treat her like you know a, a damsel or fragile or anything like that. But Guts does not have, I think the social finesse that Griffith does. Like, if Griffith was in this situation, he would be able to use the right words and the right finesse and the right sophistication to say exactly what needed to be said to Casca to get her motivated. Guts does not have that ability. <laughs> Guts does not know how to do that. So, and I think Guts is very aware that he doesn't know how to do that, right? So Guts is like, well, how do I keep her motivated and get her up and going, but I don't want to treat her like a fragile little egg because she doesn't gonna he's because she's gonna nag at me if I do that. So how do I get her motivated? And he clearly cares. Like Guts is very expressive in this anime. His facial expressions are so good. And you can tell just him looking back at her that he's worried about her. He's concerned, but he doesn't know how to express that. So when she falters. And when she stumbles, he's like, I got to get her up on her feet. And he's like, what's the matter? And he's like, are you giving up? And she doesn't respond. And Guts is like, 
And Guts is like, well, I don't know exactly how to motivate her. How would I have been motivated if I had been those shoes? And, and what's interesting is that you could probably substitute the word child with woman in this case, and it would be exactly what Gambino would have said to him back as a kid. Because he says, oh, Bob, oh, brother, a woman can be such a nuisance. If you were Gambino in that moment, you could say, oh, brother, a child could be such a nuisance, right? And just the way that he's like, he's very sarcastic looking at her. And you could tell the Casca, and he says, he says, a woman has no strength. She can lose her temper at the drop of a hat. A child has no strength. They can lose their temper at the, they can lose their temper at the drop of a hat. It substitutes. It's the exact same thing, right? And then he says, a he says, not only that, but you're on your period. Now that part, he just kind of adds that in like he knows that she's on her period. And he's like, oh, and by the way, you're also dealing with this. He says, at any rate, women just aren't cut out for war. At any rate, children just aren't cut out for war. Everything that Gut says is clearly something that Gambino has probably said to him to motivate him to keep moving. And so because of that, the only thing Guts knows to do is experience and what's worked for him. And he's like, well, Casca seems like maybe she's like me. Maybe this will work on her. And I'm sure some people could say that Guts is being sexist. I'm sure some people could say that Guts is being sexist in this moment. That he's saying that ladies aren't cut out for the battlefield. But I would argue that his actions two episodes ago when it was just the two of them, when he was really soft and tender with her and saying women have it rough, like his actual thoughts on the matter conflict with what he's telling her right now. And we know that his actual thoughts on the matter are those because he says them privately to himself. That's what he actually believes. But he knows that in this moment, Casca is not going to respond to him coddling her. She's just going to get madder. So he's doing this tough love thing to her to get her motivated to get up and prove him wrong. Because he knows that that's probably going to be the most effective thing. So I think that the show is really smart with Guts' character in that, yeah, on the surface it seems like this one thing, but if you just dig a little bit deeper, you can see what he's doing. You can see the angle that he's going at with talking to her this way. And she says, you know nothing about women. And he's like, of course not. How I'm a man, how could I know? And and I like the guts is like, yeah, I don't know anything. I, that's the point. So how else do you want me to relate to you? What I do know is that we don't have the time to be stranded here by your woman problems any longer. <laughs> Which is funny. He's basically like, and the way Gut says it is rough. It's harsh. But what he's saying is we don't have time to stop. So I, I'm just telling you what I can to get you to move because if we don't move, we're dead. So I, do you want me to carry you or not? I guess is what he's trying to get at. He's like, do you want me to carry you around the battlefield? The enemy doesn't care about your condition if or if you're a woman or not. He's basically also saying like, if we get into trouble, the enemy's not going to care. They're going to exploit that. So what do you want me to do? Do you want me to coddle you? Do you want me to like tough love? How are we going about this? He's like on second thought, they're probably glad, wouldn't you say? Like Guts is just saying like the enemy is going to be not sympathetic whatsoever. And we know that Guts is being sympathetic, but he's trying to like bring her to reality being like, we got to push forward. What are we going to do? Are, are you up for it or not? And then she's like, well, son of a bitch, I hate this. It's like, I hate it. And then I, I love Guts always puts his hand on his hip. She's like, let's go. And she goes in front of him, like, just, and, and that smile, that smile he gives her, the smile he gives her, like, all right, see, you are as tough as I think you are. That, that's it, right, Guts? I, I wish that she could see the smile that he gives her. I wish, it's so damn frustrating, this love triangle. Because at this point, Guts knows that she likes Griffith. He knows. He knows she likes Griffith. And Casca knows that Guts knows she likes Griffith. And Casca does not believe she likes Guts in any way. Although, although she kind of, when she realizes in the battle that Guts has been protecting her and following through with all this, she's like, wait a minute, have I been judging you wrong this whole time? And Guts is like, don't get me wrong, I, I don't like you. But I'm like, you're a freaking cindere. I, I just, I think Guts does like her, but he doesn't know what to do with her. And he respects that she's strong 
and he respects that she takes the initiative. But I wish, damn it, I wish she could see the smile that he gives her because that the looks that he gives her and the consideration and care that he gives her when she's not looking is just like, it's 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 romantic. It's romantic. It's just like that little smile he gives like, all right, see, you're as tough as I think you are. Like, it's just, it's so damn good. And then just smiling and the owl watching. Mm -hmm. My dogs were getting kind of riled up by the owl, which was really funny. And then he follows behind her. I like that he follows behind her to make sure she doesn't, that she keeps moving forward. And all of this showing that Guts is watching her and sees how strong she is. And for a second, like, she stumbles. She stumbles like she's going to fall, but then she keeps herself up going. And just Guts watching her. Like, Gus just watching her persevere. Like, he has no idea to understand how she's feeling. He has no idea to know what she's going through. But he knows that she doesn't feel good. He knows that she's sick. He knows that she should not be able to... She shouldn't be doing this right now. But she's persevering. And that look on his face is just like the look of a man that's like, okay. Like, like, like he's just amazed that she's getting this far, right? And, and that would be the same of anybody. I think it doesn't matter that she's a woman or not. I think anybody that was sick and struggling but persevering like Casca is would elicit the same response. But damn it, it's romantic. And I'm like, I, like, damn it, Guts. Come on. I wish that Casca could see the way that he looks at her. I wish that she could see it because it's it's something, right? It's so good. And then the moon replacing them so yeah and then of course guts pushes her out of the way because he sees the arrow coming and then all these guys show up my thought was my thought was that while they're here with all of this seems like a majority of the army and it's adon leading them so my thought was that griffith and the others would be chasing after adon and would find the troop and then naturally would all kind of come full circle and they would be led to where guts and casca are to save them and that may still be the case it may still be the case that we see, it may be that we see Griffith and them come in to save them. That may very well be. I think that that's a big possibility. That they still come in to save them. I think that that very, very well may still happen. But I was like, I, I just, this whole episode from here on in is mostly battle. I do like that Adon comes in with his hand all bandaged up. He does not look threatening at all. Adon's just like taking the high ground. And I still, listening to his voice, I can't believe that it's younger Taguro or Kaido. I can kind of, I can kind of see Oculus. I can kind of hear Kaido a little bit, but his voice seems a little bit higher pitched. But granted, this was 20 years ago. So now he's probably like in his 70s, 60s or 70s, and he sounds the voice that Kaido should have, right? But I just, I love it. I would never, this would have been around the time Yu Yu Hakusho would have been filming. So I can't imagine younger Taguro from Adon's voice. It just, it does not, it's a totally different voice. It's amazing. I'm like, okay. And I'm also used to the English dub of Yu Yu Hakusho, so that, so that might be influencing it as well. But yeah, they call the whole battle a fluke. And Adon is just, Adon cracks me up. I can't ever hate Adon He's such a dorky villain because even when he's trying to be threatening, he's like, well, we'll get you with the, with the technique passed down to the family line for the last 200 years. Like he just never changes. He's just so obsessed with his family lineage and all this ridiculousness. I'm like, Adon, are you freaking serious? Like, come on now. <laughs> are you sure? The one that the Cobble, the, the Cobblewitz family for 200 years, the one thing that is so frustrating is that he keeps on threatening Casca and like throwing out like again Casca is so used to at this point every other army they face treating her like an object treating her like something to be assaulted and claimed and the one thing that I love is one Griffith doesn't do that for reasons and two Guts doesn't do that which is, you know, very good. I'm glad that Guts Guts doesn't treat her like she's his or like she's his girl or like something like that. Guts is just like, whenever they're like, oh, our soldiers will make a play thing out of her and Casca's like, again, this old chestnut. And Guts, what I love is he's like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. She'll probably tear you to shreds. It's like, I love that Guts isn't like, you can't have her, she's mine or something like that. Instead, he's like, nah, she's a badass, so she'd probably kill you, so... Maybe not do that. And that's why I'm hoping that she defends herself against those three guys 
and manages to kill them. I hope that she does that. I hope that it's her fighting. And even though during the episode I was like, Griffin, somebody come and help her. Like, help help a girl out. I do kind of hope that she's able to defend herself in the moment next episode. I hope that that's the case. If she ends up getting saved, fine. But what I love is that Guts was like, he was never like trying to treat her like a damsel in distress. He was just protecting her because she was his comrade and because that's what you do, right? And I think it would have been the same regardless of her gender. She, If it had been Rickert in that situation, if it had been Judo in that situation, if it had been Griffith in that situation, I think Guts would have treated the situation exactly the same and would have protected them. And Guts knows at this point he doesn't want to let on that she's sick and that she's weakened because he knows that if she was on top of her game, this wouldn't even be a thing. So I love that about Guts' character. I, I admire that about Guts that... He just talks about her tearing him to shreds. He's like, she's a truly scary woman. And him smiling about her ripping him to shreds. Like, he admires that about her. It was giving me very, um, in My Hero Academia, it was giving me very Ochako Bakugo vibes. Because regardless of whether you ship them or not, I feel like between their characters, there's a sense of Ochako. Ochako is a lot more dainty a lot more girly than Casca has ever been in this series, but she is tough. And I feel like Bakugo, there's an episode where his character acknowledges her and is like, yeah, don't mess with her. She's actually a lot tougher than you think. And it's that same kind of vibe where he's not just going to be like, he doesn't treat her like a girl. He treats her like a warrior. And I'm like, look at you. Look at you, Guts. Look at you being all good. And so then, yeah, what I love about this is it's hilarious is that Adon basically tells his men what to do, but they're too scared to do it. He tells them throughout the entire episode, he's like, why aren't you fighting them all at once? Like, like you could probably win that way. But Adon's too scared to go down and join the fray himself because he's afraid of what will happen. And then because of that, in turn, his own soldiers are kind of all kind of scared and hesitant to like leap forward and do anything. So then they don't. And then it's hilarious because it's like, well, what, what do we do? It's really funny. Um, I also love the map paintings. I know that there's probably a lot of young whippersnappers watching anime that are like, they just saved on animation by doing these cheap map paintings. First of all, they are not cheap. They are beautiful pieces of artwork. Like, I'm sure they're taken directly from the manga. They are gorgeous. I love the lighting. I love the shading. I can't wait to get to the manga. It's going to be so exciting. But I just, I really love seeing them. And they're so dynamic. They add a layer to the anime that's really it doesn't read as cheap because the matte paintings and the illustrations are so beautiful that it reads more like an artistic decision than we cut a corner in the animation and i really really like that i i think that it's, it's done throughout to give like these dynamic moments and it's great and honestly casca and them like holding their own like, girl, girl does a really good job facing off with them. Like, she just knows exactly where to strike and it work. And then I, I just, I love her and Guts back to back throughout this. Like, like she, she runs into his back and, like, looks up to him. And he's, like, looking back like, you good? And she's like, are you good? Like, and she's like, I don't need your help anymore. And he's like, great. I don't want to have to worry about you. Like, I, and it's just like, he's like, good. He's like, I don't want to have to worry about you. I'm glad you can take care of yourself. That's how it should be in the middle of a battle, right? And them just facing. I love the moment where he jumps on the spears and jumps in the air and attacks them. It's great. It's a great shot. And then, yeah, Casca ending up, and I like that when Casca is struggling, Guts is right there back to her. Like, back to back with her. Like, watching her back. But he never comes out and says it, right? That's the thing about Guts. He knows that it would wound her pride as a warrior to know that he was trying to watch over her and protect her. He knows it would make her feel bad. So, instead, he's like, I got your back, don't worry. But he doesn't say anything. He lets his actions speak for him. And I absolutely love it. I love that Guts does that. So then we have Samson come out, and I'm like, where has he been this entire time? I like that his, like, his armor and everything looks like a little lantern fish. It looks like the angler. It's, it's very clever. I like it. I was thinking that because his armor was so heavy, and they talked about being indestructible, that it was going to make him very slow. And it does. Guts is able to... Guts' sword is like... He says it's dull, but I'm like, man, if that thing was sharp, I'd be worried. 
But he just like slips down in there, like so. No worry. I guess it's supposed to be a whale. But I do like that Samson presents a very real threat with the mace in that he's like, yeah, he's swinging this thing. If it hits you, it's going to hurt. And, you know, Casca and them don't really have a shield. Guts can kind of use his sword like a shield a little bit, but Casca, no way. So I, and Adon, it's his younger brother and he ends up dying. I like that the whole time he's making this speech, you look over at Guts, and Guts kind of has a smirk on his face like, oh, this guy's a threat. Are you sure? I've just battled a demon like six episodes ago. <laughs> Not worried. I love that. I love that little casual smirk on Guts' face, like, bring it on. Like, that's kind of his challenge. Also, the animation of Adon. When he's giving the monologue and talking about his brother, there's a close-up of his mouth. And on one side of his mouth, his teeth are gone. The animators took the time to draw the pieces of his mouth where his molars were. And you see the holes where the teeth are gone. That is so disgusting and also incredible. I'm like, the, the attention to detail in that moment, bleh, it's gross. So yeah, Casca recognizes that fighting him head on with a sword seems like it would be a very bad idea. Probably not good. And Guts is like, oh, don't worry. Got this. And him just bawling, him just swinging and like batting the mace back to him and it hitting a guy and knocking his head off and everything. I, again, this story with its callbacks, every time Guts has been practicing with that sword, swinging over and over and over again, like freaking Raichi from an ace, from an, uh, ace of the Diamond, it's all come back to pay off. I like that the show sets up that like, it's a setup and payoff. And here, the battle with Samson, it is a clear payoff. But the idea that Casca realizes that this entire time, it all Guts has to do is dodge the attack. Samson is huge. He's a big old man. He's like three times the size of Guts, which is insane. But he is not fast. So he's like, all he has to do is evade the attack and we're good. But Guts is afraid that Casca is not going to be able to to dodge in her state, in her condition. And so he's protecting her. And I I don't blame Casca a bit. The moment that she realizes that he's protecting her, her eyes get the sparkle. She's like, you mean to tell me that this moron has been watching over me and protecting me, but hasn't said anything because he didn't want to wound my pride this entire time? Girl, I'd have been swooning too. I'm like, I look at him. This buff-ass man protecting me, but he's doing it, like, like, to not point out. And he's injured, too. His, like, side is bleeding, so she realizes she's, like... And there is a part of Casca in that moment that you can tell she's frustrated because she's, like, if I wasn't in this condition right now, if I was more, like, if I didn't have my period, if I was more, if I was stronger, then Guts wouldn't have to do this. So there is a part of Casca in this moment. You can see the, the visible frustration on her face where she's upset. She's like, why me? Why is this happening? Why couldn't I be stronger to protect him? But then there's that realization that he's been doing this, but he's not been calling attention to it because he's not wanted to wound her pride. And so you can tell she kind of feels bad for nagging at guts when he's really been considerate. And so it's, it's just so layered. I love this moment where she's just like, damn it. And then they're like, quit your dawdling and go after them. And Guts is like, I want you to run. He's like, you, he's like, right now we are surrounded. My sword is fine. I'm in great shape. I know I've been injured, but I'm still kicking. You need to get out of here because you are a liability. He's like, right now you're not as strong as you normally are. You're sick. You're going to get hurt and you're going to make an error. And he's like, and that's going to throw me off. So he's like, just get out of here. Run and take care of yourself, and I'll do this. And, and there's nothing, he's not suggesting that she's weak. He's just like, he knows what state she's in. He's like, you gotta go. Like, th this is the only chance. If you stay here, you're probably gonna die. I can't believe you just killed Samson like that. And all the troops are like, oh, huh. <laughs> and Adon's like, my bro. And when she says, I won't leave without you, I'm like, I just, what a, damn love triangle she's like i don't want to leave without you like it's very in that moment you know she cares 
She cares about guts. If she didn't care about guts, she would have left. And that calls back to her saying, like, I don't care if you die on the battlefield and all of this. I just don't want you ruining Griffith's plans. And it calls back to that. And now the truth comes out where she's like, she realizes what Guts is doing. And she's like, look, I don't want to leave without you. And I realize what you're doing. And maybe I was wrong. But because she's also kind of Sindri like him, she's not going to admit it. But she's like, I'm not going to leave without you. And, and Adon's like, I'm not here for this love fest. And so then it comes out. They're like, well, aim for her kill her off because she's not going to be able to dodge the arrows and that's where Griffith well where Guts jumps in to save her and he gets shot in the arm with the arrow and I love that he doesn't seem bothered by it like the arrow's not bothering him he's like getting wounded on behalf of a mere woman how stupid you are and Guts is just like like dude you don't even know and I love that shot of her like reaching up to grab the arrow and she's like, why? And then he says, don't get the wrong idea. A sickly person is no use here, so I want you to get lost. I, okay. Do I think that Guts loves her? No, I don't think so. I think Guts is very confused about what he actually feels. I don't think Guts, I don't think Guts is in love with either Griffith or Casca. I think Guts is infatuated with Griffith. I, if, here's, here's my thing. I don't think that Guts knows he's in love with Griffith. Let me rephrase that. I, do I think Guts is in love with Griffith? Oh, absolutely. Yes. The, infatuated. Will do anything for Griffith. Yes. Just like Casca is. Do I think Guts is totally aware of it? Uh, somewhat. But I don't think that Guts is in love with Casca. Do I think it could become that? Who knows? Who knows? But I do think that he doesn't want her thinking that he's doing this all for her, like he's love struck or something, but he's being very practical about this. But I mean, I, he does care about her. That much is very obvious. And he does, is considerate. And he's just trying to like, you can't see his face when he's telling her all of this. He's like, don't get the wrong idea. I don't like you. I don't want to invade the enemy. I'm just like, just pointing out the obvious. You need to go. But we know from the way that he's looked at her that he does care, but he's a damn cinder and doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to give it away to her. And so he tells her, like, you... He's like, as you said, maybe I'm content just wielding my sword. Like, he, he puts it back in her face, which is kind of funny. He throws it back at her, being like, you said I'm just some sword-wielding guy that doesn't care about anything. So, as you said, maybe that's the case. And now Casca's like, well, damn it, maybe I was wrong. He's like, but you're different, right? And he's like, I'm not, he's like, I'm just some muscle head that's wielding a sword, but you have an ambition that I don't. He's like, do you want to die in a place like this? He's like, you want to, and I love, he's like, do you want to die in a meaningless death in this little skirmish when you know that you have bigger things to go after? Has the wish you hold in your heart rotted away that much? I, God, that's such like a poetic thing for Guts to say. Where he's like, you've told me your wish. You've spilled your, you've spilled your guts to guts, literally. He's like, you've told me your wish. You want to be by Griffith's side. If you don't get out of here, that's not going to happen. And I think Guts is acknowledging. He's like, I don't even know what my goal is right now. I don't even know what my dreams are. I don't know what my ambitions are. I don't know. But what I do know is that if you don't get out of here, then you're not going to be able to do... He's like, you have a dream, and you've told me that dream, and if you stay here, you're not going to be able to live it out. I don't know what my dream is yet. I'm just a guy wielding a sword, fighting battles. That's all I got right now. But he's like, if you're going to be with Griffith, you need to go. And the fact that he acknowledges her dreams, he's like, there are times when a sword needs to be sheathed. Go back to the sheath that protects you. I'm like, oh my God. He's like, I, there are times when you need someone's protection. When you need someone to watch over you, you need to go back to that person. Because that person is Griffith. And you need to go back to him. I'm like, oh my God, Guts. Like, it's, it's romantic poetry. And she's just like, he's like, go back to Griffith. And in that moment, he's acknowledging that she loves him. And he's like, that's the man for you. Go back to him. I'm like, ugh. And I think Casca at this point 
realizes that this is a man that respects her wishes and respects her dreams and is fighting to help keep her dream alive. And I'm like, girl, I would be swooning too. I would be all about it. I, I get it now. I, I wonder if Casca is going to be more receptive towards Guts after this because she knows that Griffith doesn't care about her like that. She knows. She knows he's doing whatever is for his own ambition, but she can't help the way that she feels about Griffith. But now that she knows that Guts is a considerate person and is considerate of her dreams and treats her like a human being, not something to be objectified, not just a woman, but a person with a dream and ambitions of her own. I'm like, is she going to be like, well, maybe I could be more open towards you. Maybe. If they get out alive, right? If that happens. I'm sure that, that she will. But I'm like, I feel like this was a turning point where she realized, like, the helmet flies off and he throws the sword over his shoulder and everything. At this point, I feel like it is the moment Casca was like, oh, you are treating me like a person just like Griffith does in your own little himbo way. <laughs> You are. So I'm like, girl, yes. And then I love that she runs and she's like, don't die, idiot. And then he's like, okay, good. She's gone. You shouldn't go chasing after a woman until you get your work done. You scheming cowards. Yeah. And then Guts just goes after him one by one. And they're like, what a man. And he's like, I just hope you die when I strike you so that you're not just writhing in pain. And what I love about it is Adon's like, I've been telling you all to attack them all at once. Why aren't you doing that? And the soldiers talk back. The soldiers are like, quit talking nonsense. He's like, don't you want to avenge Samson? They're like, no, not really. <laughs> they're like, we didn't really care for him at all, actually. We, we, we don't like him. And they're like, well, aren't you doing this for, for the sake of Tudor and for the crown? And they're like, we're just mercenaries getting paid. Like, I just love the fourth wall breaking that they're just like, well, actually, we don't care. <laughs> And so then, then Adon's like, fine, I will speak a language you all understand. I'll pay you more money if you kill him. And they're like, oh. And Guts is like, ah, typical mercenary behavior. I've been around these guys all my life. Makes sense. What are you bitching about? And then we cut back to Casca. And I like that Casca's trying to whittle out, like, how many guys are left. She thinks there's five. And she manages to kill two of them. I'm like, I right, girl. Casca is such a badass. I'm like, I, I love her. And just the shot of it cutting back from her running to Griffith fighting or to Guts fighting. Sorry, I keep confusing them this episode. To Guts fighting and just the blood everywhere. Just the, the shot of him like slaying all these men. It's great. And when he, oh, when he gets the arrow through the hand and he just breaks it. I'm like, dude. There's probably some splinters in that. There's probably some wood stuck in there. You may you may need to have somebody like like fix that up. Fix that left hand up, right? Oh my god, like what a badass. And then just him cutting through the darkness. And then of course she gets stuck by these three men, right? Where they stand on her, where they're like standing on her arms so that she can't move them, right? Which it would be hard to do that, right? Now, their biggest mistake is that they did not kill her immediately. These three guys, their big mistake was they did not immediately kill her. They thought they were going to assault her instead. I just want her to get out of the situation. At this point, I want her to be able to do it herself. But in the same vein, if Griffith and Judo and them come and save her, I'm fine with that too. At this point, she's been fighting so hard alongside Guts that what can we do? I am amazed, though, that they showed the moment of like her her skirt getting her blouse getting cut and they didn't have a warning in this episode like they did with the last one which surprised me I guess it's not full frontal and maybe that's the case but they're like we don't care if you command a thousand men or not and I love that Casca is just thinking like what do I do why is this happening and then we have guts like meanwhile swinging through all these men like just attacking them and I like the juxtaposition of her saying, my arm is so powerless right now. And then we cut to Guts just like using his arm to just swing nonstop. It's a really good episode, but it was just so fast. 
And I really thought by the end of it that we'd see Griffith or them, either we, I, we'd see them get away, they'd win, or if they were in a corner, we'd see Griffith and them show up at the last minute. But no, we don't. And I'm like, Ugh. so yeah. I have a lot of other series that I need to catch up on. And I was like, oh, I'll watch this episode and then wait for a while till I catch up. I don't know if that's going to happen, <laughs> but I'll probably at least wait till I get some more comments and then get back on here and talk to you all about it. But, oh my God, I just, this series, it is so good. And I love, I love that if you want to, you can take things at face value with what the characters give us, but it's so much more rewarding if you dig a little bit deeper, especially with characters like Guts and Casca, who on the surface, we were talking about in the Discord um, where with episode five and six, a lot of people, like, they don't like Casca. So she's just nagging. I'm like, well, but she has a reason why she's doing the things that she's doing. And once you get to, like, these episodes and you really figure her character out, you're like, it makes so much sense why the things that she's doing are happening. Like, her actions make sense when you know the basis behind them. So I really like that. I like that a lot. So, hmm. <laughs> But I, I'm so excited, y'all. I hope y'all are too. I, mm, I can't wait to see what we get uh, in the next episode. Now I'm curious, how are they getting out of this mess? I wouldn't be surprised if Guts like swings his sword and finds a way to like kill everybody there. But with Casca, I hope she does it herself. But if if the band of the Hawk come in and help both Griffith, both Guts and Casca get out of it, I'll be fine. What I would like though is if. If Griffith and his men show up to help Casca, I hope they show up to help Guts, too. I hope that it's equal, right? She's not just the person rescued, but also Guts. Even though it could be that neither of them truly needed it. Although Casca's in a pretty bad situation, so. But I, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction and discussion. But I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah! I'll be back very soon to talk about episode 14 of Berserk. Bye!